Hi, my name is Kirsten Schnell. I am a fourth grade teacher in Northern Colorado and you are watching the Crazy Cat Classroom. Hi everyone. So I am filming this outside, so I apologize if it, the audio is not very good quality. I am just loving this weather here. It's getting into the 80s and 90s already, um, which is a very nice treat for the end of May. And I thought that we could just have a casual patio talk today about my experience being a teacher. And my journey to becoming a teacher is very different than most. So, um, I just want to rewind to uh, Kirsten as a child. Kirsten as a child did not want to be a teacher. I filtered through so many different career um, decisions. I always tell my fourth graders that I wanted to work for NASA when I was their age. And um, what I have learned about myself as I got, have gotten older is I'm a learner and I love to learn. So ending up in the teaching profession just has made sense to the type of personality. I graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in art history. And I love art history because I get to learn about culture and philosophies in a visualized way. And any student that comes into my classroom knows that I'm a very visual learner. I do obviously realize that that's my preference in learning and so trying to incorporate other ways of learning into my classroom as well but primarily i always have some sort of visual with my teaching because that's just how i learn and to be honest i find that most of our kids are transitioning into a visual way of learning because of the technology because of youtube and all of the things that they have at their fingertips. And that being said, um, that is essentially where I came from. Now, why did I get a degree in art history? Great question. I wanted to graduate on time. <laughs> that was my goal when I was in my 20s. I got married when I was 20. And at that time, I just wanted to graduate on time. I did experiment with the possible idea of becoming a teacher early on in college, but working in a summer camp as a recreational coordinator and having to be the no police was just not something that I thought I would enjoy because I thought that teachers would have to tell their kids no all the time. I know now that that's not the truth. The college I went to didn't have a hospitality major, which is what I would have probably gone for because I want to own my own business and I want to open up a bakery. Fast forward to graduation, I needed a job and I couldn't get one in a bakery. I didn't even try to look for one in a museum because I didn't want to do art history. But the last quarter of my senior year of college, I was a tutor and that's where I started kind of thinking that I might actually like this teaching thing. I was teaching a girl who was a sophomore who had dyslexia, like me. And I started really considering maybe there is something to this teaching thing. However, when it comes to art history, the only real teaching you can do is at the university level. So I didn't want to go back to school um, at all, <laughs> to be honest. I ended up getting a job at a daycare when right out of college. And I worked with two-year-olds and school-age kids after school. Um, I did the school-age kids during the summer and it was like a summer camp-esque feel. And then during the fall to spring, I worked with the two-year-olds in the morning and then the school-age kids in the afternoon. And I loved it. The daycare that I worked for, the people I worked for, the kids. I loved every single minute of it. And I really thought that I could do that for the rest of my life. I, oh, the wind's picking up. <laughs> so the next school year, I was fortunate enough to get a full-time job in the preschool. So I didn't have to do a split shift. So I taught 
the three-year-olds in the morning and little did my husband and I know that we were going to be moving to Colorado. So in April, 2015, we moved to Colorado. Well, technically we arrived on May 1st. So it's been officially five years in Colorado. I moved from Washington state, which is where I'm originally from, which anybody from Washington state will be like, why are you saying Washington state? Because that's not what we call it. We call it Washington, but people in the Midwest have to be referred to Washington state because when you say Washington, they assume DC. So (laughs) that's why I've gotten very used to tacking on the state to Washington. Anywho, so we moved from Washington about five years ago. And when we moved here, I got a job at a bakery and I only lasted three months. I ended up hating it, (laughs) which is really great to find out when you are thinking about owning a business, right? I ended up at that knowing that that's not the type of life I want to live. Um, I wanted a job where I could leave the building. I wanted a job where my kid, my future child, wouldn't have to help. I wanted a job where my husband and I could hang out. And I realized that I would have to sacrifice a lot of things to own my own bakery. And I wasn't willing to sacrifice those things. Also, while I worked at the bakery, I was really missing my kids from the daycare that I left in Washington. But I had came to terms that it wasn't the kids that I missed. It was the teaching that I missed. Given I miss those kids dearly and I follow a lot of their parents on Facebook still. However, I missed teaching. And so... I left the bakery, got a job at another daycare, and worked there for almost a year. I worked in with the two-year-olds trying to get into the preschool and pre-K realm, but because I had background in teaching two-year-olds, the director wanted to keep me in the two-year-old realm. I became a the main teacher. We had two teachers in the classroom, and I became the main teacher, and I even got my certification in younger childhood development. That being said, I was just not very happy where I was. The kids were great. The family was great. It was just how things were run that was a little bit difficult. And I learned very quickly that someone who shows a lot of empathy and someone who shows, who kind of wears their emotions on their sleeves, that that just wasn't a place for me. Um, I was getting my master's in elementary education online and I felt just very stuck, not knowing what to do. Then one of my coworkers, she came back after her student teaching for the summer. Um, well, she did student teaching in the spring and she came back for the summer to earn some extra money before she started her job. So she gave me the advice to become a para. She And I am so thankful for her to this day that she suggested that I should become a para because that opened a door of possibilities that I had would have never thought of. So the next school year, I was a para at a local middle school and it was awesome. Um, Our sixth and seventh graders were strictly students who had autism. And then our eighth graders was a mixed bag of kids with autism Um, and IS students. I got hired on as a 504 para with a four student who had cerebral palsy and needed just some help getting from class to class through transitions. Other than that, absolutely capable student. But there was a para two position that opened and meant more money, meant more time working with kids with autism and meant more opportunities for me to practice skills that I was actively learning in my master's classes. So I applied for that job and got it in the school that I was working at. And 
um, that that just really taught me the true meaning of differentiation, the true meaning of modifications, the true meaning of these teaching terms that we talk about all the time. And I, to this day, am so thankful that I was ever a para before I became a teacher, even before my student teaching, because I learned so much, so much more than the schooling, so much more than even student teaching was through that para position. I learned how to love kids who were diverse in so many different ways. I got the opportunity to teach without a teaching degree. And to this day, I would love to be a para and work with kids with special needs. But sadly, paras don't make a whole lot. <laughs> so I love being a para. And I feel like that gives me a little bit of an upper hand when I'm working with my para who helps me in my classroom because I understand where they are and I understand that they are expertise in their own way. Though they don't have a degree, it doesn't matter. They have their expertise and that I can rely on that. After being a para, I went into my student teaching and I student taught at a very, very good school, elementary school in fourth grade. And my mentor teacher, amazing. She just really gradually let go of the reins and allowed me to pick them up. And I am so thankful to this day. She really taught me about organization and she cared about the kids, but yet she still had a firm hand on classroom management and very organized. Not there yet, <laughs> but I'm, I'm hoping that after 21 years, I will be. After my student teaching, I quickly got a job as a substitute in the school district that I want to work for, which is a local school district where I live. And I was about, a, I was a sub for about a month. And then there was this job opportunity that opened up where I could be a co-teacher in an intermediate classroom um, in a Title I school. So it was a grant paid position paid by the local college and essentially what they were trying to discover was if there are two teachers in the classroom do students learn better and this might seem like a obvious answer because the answer is yes they do but they were that was the reason for this grant paid position so I worked with an amazing teacher in fourth grade again. And what's funny is that we were initially paired up. Um, she was paired up with a different co-teacher um, because of her needs. But it turns out that I think that we fit so well together. We're both very empathetic to our students. However, she had a lot of skills behind classroom management in a Title I school that I did not have. And she had a lot of knowledge on how to deal with students who come from homes that are not necessarily loving or don't have the time to be loving. And it was just really fantastic working with her. And I am so very close with her to this day. If I'm having a bad day, I text her saying, I miss you. Um, I wish we were in the class together. And yeah, she's just fantastic. And that was my first experience of seeing the amazing ability of creating relationships as teachers, because it's such a shared um, experience that if you're not a teacher, you don't understand. Yeah. So after I was a co-teacher, I was applying for jobs for the next school year. Now, this was the 2018-19 school year that I was applying for. And in this school district, if you don't get a job by the end of May, you have to wait till like July, end of July, for jobs to reopen. So I was very picky and I only wanted to work in the school district that I is in my local community, is where I had already some PD hours. 
And so I was very limited on myself when it came to finding a job. Now, when August hit and there I hadn't had a job, I was not as picky anymore. And so I was applying to um, school districts that were close by as well. I had two interviews around like August 1st. Um, one was in the school district that I wanted to work for and one was not. The one that was not was a fourth grade position. And the one that was, was a sixth grade English position. So it was kind of a weird thing where one had one thing I wanted and the other one had one thing I wanted. The sixth grade was in the district I wanted and the district that I didn't want had the grade that I wanted. It was very lucky that the principal of the sixth grade position called me first because I was going to accept any job because I needed a job. So um, I accepted the sixth grade English teacher in the district that I wanted, which again was very, very fortunate it was for a one year only position and I would be teaching sixth grade English, which though I had some experience in middle school, it was still going to be very new, very different. So um, one thing that I learned with teaching sixth graders is the importance of community, the importance of creating relationships with your kids but also the difficulty in doing that in only 65 minutes, the difficulty in when students just automatically write you off and don't respect you. But what I realized was the reason why they weren't respecting me was because I wasn't being authentic. I was a first year teacher. Though I had all this experience, I was still a first year teacher and I was getting so many different advice from everyone. But yet I wasn't filtering it to figure out what worked best for me. And I realized the second year, right, my second year of teaching that that's so important to filter out all the advice because teachers want to help, right? That's why we went into teaching. They want to help you. But sometimes it can be overwhelming when so many people are trying to help you. And I think for veteran teachers, you need to realize that for us new teachers, we appreciate your advice, but sometimes it's just too much. And because we are overachievers, we want to make it look good and we want to make it look pretty, but it's not gonna be pretty. So um, I learned a lot being a sixth grade English teacher. I was really disappointed when the teacher who I was one yearing for decided to come back because that meant leaving a great team behind. That meant leaving an amazing school behind. And though sixth grade is not where my heart would have been as far as the age that I would prefer to teach, I really, really enjoyed it. I really was surprised how much I enjoyed it. And I am still so thankful to this day for that opportunity to teach sixth grade and realize how the, especially in English, how the curriculum and standards build upon themselves. So fast forward, um, I was applying to all the jobs I knew. I was like, oh gosh, I need a job. You know, if I don't get a job by the end of May, like, again, like how defeating will that be? And I wasn't limiting myself this time. Um, I was starting to apply to all the school districts um, around my area because I didn't want to be in the boat I was the year before where it was August and I was like, oh, because I'm a planner and I just want to know where I was going to be. So, I got the job before the end of May at the school that I currently work for, and I got a long-term job. So a job that was, um, wasn't a one-year only, but was a continuous job. And I am so thankful. One, 
The community of my work is phenomenal. My principal is amazing. They really have that family-esque atmosphere. They want to cultivate a family-esque atmosphere with their staff. And because it's a small town where I work, they are really close-knit. And the parents are amazing. They're very supportive of teachers. And I am just so thankful. Also, it's in the school district that I want to work for, but that I have all my PD in. And it is in fourth grade. So I just finished my first year or well, finished my second year of teaching and my first year of teaching all by myself, fourth grade. So that is my teacher journey. I don't know what else to say other than it has definitely been a wild journey. If you were to have asked me when I was in high school, if you, I would have became a teacher, I would have told you no. Um, maybe the people I went to high school with would say, uh-huh, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> but I think that it's just amazing that I ended up where I ended up because I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for my team. I'm thankful for everyone who helped me along my journey. And I continue to seek out opportunities to learn and to perfect my craft and to become a better teacher. So... That being said, I did not get any advice for how to end these videos, but I realized some things that that's something that's very important to me that I mentioned in my last video. And that's the ability for my students to believe in themselves, but also for teachers. It's so important that you believe in yourself. So I'm going to say that's it for me. I hope you have a fabulous day and remember to always believe in yourself because when you have the bravery, when you have the courage, you can make the world a better place. See ya! Thank you for watching to the end of this video. Make sure you hit that like button and ring the notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new video. If you enjoy my channel, please feel free to subscribe for more teaching related content. I'm so happy to have you in this community. Thank you for watching.